stream is started, then um, okay, let's let's get started. Um, I'll hand it off to Yash to start um, announcing the speller numbers and kick off. And spellers in the first round, whenever uh, Yash says your number, if you can just say your name and your grade, and then we'll give you your word after that. And keep your hands in the frame. Okay, thank you. Let's get started. Okay, hi, uh, speller number three. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Um, your word is taciturn. Taciturn. Can I have the language of origin, please? Uh, yes, it is French from Latin. Okay. Taciturn. T A C I T E R N Taciturn. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is T A C I T U R N. Good job. Thank you for coming. Okay. Color number 14, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Your word is urbicarian. Urbicarian. U R B I C A R I A N. Urbicarian. That is correct. Speller number 15, are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Your word is harmonious. Can I have all the information, please? Sure. Uh, harmonious is an adjective. It can either be pronounced harmonious or harmonious. It is. It, it went from Greek to Latin to Middle English. It means musically concordant or agreeably consonant. The decker is a harmonious blend of the ancient and the modern objects. Uh, can we see your hands, please? H-A-R-M-O-N-I-U-S. Harmonious. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is H-A-R-M-O-N-I-O-U-S. Good job. Speller 18, are you ready? Yes. Your word is scornfully. Scornfully? Uh, no, scornfully. Scornfully? Uh, can you say that one more time? Is it scornfully? No, it is scornfully. Scornfully? Scornfully. Oh, is it like scornfully? Uh, I I think that sounds correct. S C O R N F U L L Y. That is correct. Speller twenty six. Are you ready? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Your word is visibility. Uh, visibility, can I have all the information? Sure. Uh, visibility is a noun. It can either be pronounced, uh, it, the only pronunciation is visibility. It, mean, it's, uh, it comes from late Latin. It means the degree or extent to which something is visible. The heavy fog reduced the visibility of the road to a quarter mile. Uh, Am I am I is am I saying it correctly? Visibility. Oh, uh, that sounds about right. Uh, can you repeat the definition? The degree or extent to which something is visible. Uh, can you repeat the word? Visibility. 
visibility v i s i b i l i t y visibility that is correct uh spelling number 29 are you ready yeah i'm ready okay your word is assailant assailant could i have all the information of this word please sure um assailant is a noun it is middle french from latin it means a person who attacks another person with violence the police found the assailant who attacked a woman in the parking lot to steal her purse assailant a s s a i l a n t assailant that is correct okay uh speller number 31 are you ready yes your word is portrait may i have all the information please portrait is a noun it can either be pronounced portrait or portrait it is middle french it means a painting drawing or photograph of a person typically showing the face Anne hired an artist to paint her grandfather's portrait. Could you please put your hands in the frame? Portrait. P O R T R A I T. Portrait. That is correct. Thank you. Um Speller 45, are you ready? Yes. Okay, can we see your hands, please? Your word is forgeable. Uh, can you please give me the definition? Sure. It means capable of or suitable for being beaten into shape by heating and hammering. Uh, can you please repeat the word again? Forgeable. Forgeable. Am I saying it correctly? Uh, it sounds about right. A forgeable? Yes. F-O-R-G-I-B-L-E. Forgeable. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is F-O-R-G-E-A-B-L-E. -E. Good job and thanks for coming. Can I leave the meeting? Yes, you're good. Uh, yes. Speller number 54, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Satellite. Can you please give me the sentence for satellite? Earth has only one natural satellite, but Saturn and Jupiter have many. Can you please repeat the word? Satellite. 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 S A T E L I T E. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is S A T E L L I T E. Good job and thanks for coming. You're welcome. Thank you. Speller number 56. Uh, Speller number 56, are you ready? Uh, it looks like you're muted. Number 56? Uh, yes, I'm ready. Okay. Your word is bungee. Can I have all the information, please? Sure. The word is bungee. That is the only pronunciation. It is a noun. 
Uh, it is of unknown origin. It means an elastic cord used as a fastening or shock absorbing device for airplanes on the deck of a carrier. The bridge provided a firm platform for the bungee jumpers. B U L G G D E Hold on just one second. We need to go over that. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is B U N G E E. Yeah, that's what he said. B U N G E E. Unfortunately, when he was speaking, he said B U N G G E E. Uh, yeah, he, 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 he wasn't clear the, in the first G, so he repeated the same G, Vivan. Can you, you have to be like, uh, I, I don't think you just have to be clear when you're restarting. Yes, you can't restart without later at asking to do so. Um, if there's any appeal, do you mind, just so we don't disrupt uh, for the other spellers, do you mind sending a message to the spell pundit host and then uh, judges can review at the end of the round? And if there's any uh, second word that we would want to give, we can we can do that at the end of the round. Thank you. Because the first time I, he said G, it was very low. That's why he said it loudly the second time. So I know because I teach him every day. So he, he did say G once. Yeah, so if you can send a message into the Spell Pundit chat, judges, we'll, we'll, we can take a look again at the end of the round. Okay, quick, keep your hands down. Um, speller number 58, are you ready? Yes. Okay, um, can we see your hand? Yeah. Um, your word is chaotic. C H A O T I C chaotic. That is correct. Spell in number sixty. Yeah. Oh, uh, can we see your hands, please? Okay, your word is monopolize. M O N O P L Y S. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is M O N O P O L I Z E. Good job. Thanks for coming. Speller number 63. Uh, Speller number 63, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Um, your word is ludicrous. Can you please say that again? Ludicrous. Ludicrous, is that correct? Oh, uh, it sounds about right. Um, can I have the definition? It means deserving laughter or scorn for being absurdly inept, false, or foolish. Can you please say the word again? Ludicrous. How? Wait, I forgot the word again. Uh, okay, the word is ludicrous. L U D I C R U S E. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is L U 
B I C R O U S. Good job and thanks for coming. Uh, can I leave the meeting? Yes. Scholar number 65. Your word is pecuniary. Pecuniary, right? Yes. Pecuniary, can you give me all the information? Sure. Um, the word is pecuniary. It can be either pecuniary or pecuniary. It is an adjective. It comes from Latin. It means consisting of money or taken in the form of monetary payments. Prosecution lawyers argued that the chairman had uh, that the prosecution lawyers argued that the chairman had a pecuniary interest in the deal. Pecuniary, P E C U N I A R Y, pecuniary. That is correct. Speller number 70. I'm ready. Okay, uh, can we see your hands, please? Okay. Your word is anxiety. Anxiety. Can I please have all the information? Um, anxiety is the only pronunciation. It is a noun. Uh, it comes from Latin. It means a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. There's a lot of anxiety among the company staff about possible job losses. Anxiety. A N X C I T Y. Anxiety. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is A-N-X-I-E-T-Y. Good job and thanks for coming. Speller number 76. Yes. Okay. Your word is bossiness. Bossiness, um, can I have the definition? It means the state of being overly authoritative or domineering. Bossiness. B O S S I N E S S. Bossiness. That is correct. Spelling number 81. Yes. Your word is mischief. Can I have the definition, please? It means playful misbehavior or troublemaking, especially in children. Mischief. M-I-S-C-H-I-E-F. Mischief. That is correct. Spelling number 90. Are you ready? Yes. Your word is scrounge. Scrounge. Am I saying it right? Scrounge. Oh, uh, it sounds about right. Can you please give me all the information? The word is scrounge. That is the only pronunciation. It is a verb. It came from an alteration of, of an English dialectal word. It means to round up, find, or salvage. Tim went to the cafeteria to see what he could scrounge up for lunch. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Um, I have just the one. Okay. Scrounge. Scrounge. Am I saying it right? Uh, it sounds about right. Scrounge. S C R. O U 
M G E scrounge. That is correct. Well, speller number ninety two, are you ready? Yes. Your word is domiciled. And I have the definition, please. It means having an established place of residence, either of an individual or of a family. Domiciled or domiciled? Domiciled. Can I have it in a sentence, please? The pharmaceutical company is domiciled in, in Switzerland. Domiciled. D O M I C I L E D. Domiciled. That is correct. Uh, Speller 94, are you ready? Yes. Can we see your hands, please? Your word is berserk. Berserk. Can I have the definition, please? It means destructively or frenetically violent, wild or frenzied. Can you repeat the word, please? Berserk. B I R S E R K Berserk. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is B E R S E R K. Good job. Thank you for coming. Speller number 96, are you ready? Hi. Hi. Um, your word is scrawled. Scrawled. May I please have all the definite, um, sorry, may I please have all the information? Sure. The word is scrawled. That is the only pronunciation. It is a verb. It is of unknown origin. It means wrote carelessly and hastily, scribbled. Sandra scrawled a note for her friend on a piece of paper. Scrawled. S C R A W R L E D. Scrawled. That is correct. Thank you. Um, speller number 99, are you ready? Yeah. Your word is bookworm. Could I please have all the information? Sure. The word is bookworm. That is the only pronunciation. It is a noun. It comes from Middle English plus another Middle English part. It means one who loves to read. What does a bookworm have in common with a black tufted marmoset? They both like a little quiet. Bookworm. B O O K W O R M. Bookworm. That is correct. Thank you. All right, fantastic. Um, that is the end of the first round here. Um, Speller 56, are you ready? Yes. And if we could have uh, the parent, if um, we, we asked the parent to stay out of the room. Thank you. Okay, your word is umble root. U M B L E R O O T. Umble root. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is U M B I L R O O T. Good job. Thanks for coming. Okay, fair. Happy. Thanks. Um, if that's the case, are all spellers back? Okay, perfect. Um, amazing. Thank you all for being on time. 
Let's go and start with round two from here. So, uh, Yash, whenever you're ready. Okay. Um, Speller number 14, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Your word is evidence. Evidence. Can I please have the definition of this word? Um, it means the available body of facts or information indicating whether a belief or proposition is true or valid. Can you please say the word again? Evidence. E V I D E N C E. Evidence. That is correct. Color well, number 18, are you ready? Yeah. Your word is ontogeny. What? Excuse uh, me. Yeah. What, what, what did you say? Uh, I'm sorry. The word is ontogeny. Ontogeny? Yes. Um, can I please have all the information? Um, ontogeny is a noun. That is the only pronunciation. Uh, it is of inter the origin. It comes from international scientific vocabulary. It means the biological development or course of development of an individual organism. Ontogeny, phylogeny, evolution, and metamorphosis are all related. All different aspects of the same larger process. Let's repeat the word again. Ontogeny. Um. O N T O G E N Y. That is correct. Um, speller number twenty-six. Yeah. Your word is ricotta. A uh, ricotta. Am I saying it correctly? It sounds about right. Okay, um, can I have all the information? Ricotta, uh, the word is ricotta. It can either be ricotta or ricotta. It is a noun. It comes from Italian. It means a white, unripened whey, whey cheese of Italian origin that resembles cottage cheese. The ricotta cheese has a very short life and should be bought and used daily. Uh, can you read the definition? Um, it means the biological development or course of development of an individual organism. Um, hold on. I think that was for the last word. The definition for this one is a white unripened whey cheese of Italian origin that resembles cottage cheese. Okay, um, can, is there any alternate pronunciations? Uh, yes, it can either be ricotta or ricotta. Okay, uh, ricotta, am I saying it quickly? It sounds about right. Ricotta. R I C O T T A, ricotta. That is correct. Um, speller number 29. Yeah, I'm ready. Your word is deceive. Deceive. Uh, are there any homonyms for this word? Um, I'm not any that I'm aware of. Oh. Uh, could I have the definition of the story, please? It means to cause to believe the false, delude. Deceive? Uh, can you say that again? Deceive? No, it is deceive. Uh, I can't hear you. Could you say that again? Deceive. Oh, deceive, right? Yeah. Could I have it in a sentence, please? Sam was grounded for two months when he tried to deceive his mother by printing his own report card. Deceive. D E C E I V E. Deceive. That is correct. Okay.
Uh, can I get get up from my seat now that I'm done spelling from my word? Yeah, That's just keep your cameras on, but feel free to yeah. take a break. Okay. Follow 31. Yes. Your word is sensible. Can I have, can I please have all, all the information, please? Yeah, the word is sensible. It can either be sensible or sensible. It is an adjective. It is Middle English from French from Latin. It means showing good judgment or having the ability to make sound decisions. Janet's sensible, saving, and wise investment choices made her a millionaire. Can you please repeat the word? Sensible. Sensible. S-E-N-S-I-B-L-E. -S -S -E. Sensible? That is correct. Thank you. Scholar number 58. Yeah. Oh, can we see your hand? Your word is arugula. Can you repeat the word? Arugula. Uh, you? Can you repeat the word? Arugula. You? R? U? G? U? L? L? A? Arugula? I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is A R U G U L A. Good job. Thanks for coming. Spelling number 65. Your word is hubcap. Say it again. Hubcap. Is there any is there any alternate pronunciations? No, there's just the one. Can you say it again? Hubcap. Am I saying it right? Hubcap? It sounds about right. Can I have all the information? Sure. The word is hubcap. It is a noun. It is probably of unknown origin plus a Middle English part. It means a metal or plastic cover for the central part of a motor vehicle's wheel. The mechanic bolted the hubcap onto the wheel. Hubcap. Am I saying it right? Uh, it sounds right. Hubcap. H-U-B-C-A-P. That is correct. Speller 76. Yes. Your word is antonym. Antonym. Can I have the definition? It means a word of opposite meaning. Antonym. A-N-T-O-N-Y-M. Antonym. That is correct. Speller 81. Yes. Mooling. Yeah. What's the word? Mewling. Can I have that definition, please? To cry weakly as a baby or young child. Wine. Wine? Uh, no, the word is mewling. And uh, we believe that this word mewling. has homonym. Mewling. M-U-L-I-N-G. Mewling. Okay, thank you for your patience. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is M-E-W-L-I-N-G. Good job, thanks for coming. May I leave on primary and secondary devices? 
Yes, yes, you can. Thank you. Color 90. The word is adequate. Uh, can you please give me all the information? Sure. The word is adequate. That is the only pronunciation. It is an adjective. It comes from Latin. It means sufficient to satisfy a requirement or meet a need. Dave didn't have adequate time to prepare for the exam. Adequate. Does, does this word come from the Latin et? Meaning also related to? Let me just see. Um, that sounds about right. Adequate. Adequate. Am I saying it right? Um, it sounds about right. Adequate. A D E Q. U A D E adequate. That is correct. Spell in ninety two. Yes. Your word is mulberry. Can I have the definition, please? It means any of several deciduous trees having edible, usually purple fruit, originally grown for feeding silkworms. Is it mulberry? Mulberry. Can I add in a sentence, please? The silkworm is reared for the production of silk and its diet consists solely of mulberry leaves. Can you say it again, please? Mulberry. Mulberry. M. U L L B E R R Y mulberry. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. The correct spelling is M U L B E R R Y. Good job. Thanks for coming. Speller number 96. Yes. Your word is fetlocks. May I please hear the word again? Fetlocks. May I please have the definition? It means projections of the leg of a horse behind the joint between the cannon bone and great pastern bone bearing a tuft of hair. Fretlocks, am I pronouncing that right? Uh, no, it is fetlocks. Fretlocks? No, fetlocks. Fat locks. That sounds about right. Okay. F E T L O C K S. Fret locks. That is correct. Thank Spell you. Number 99. Yeah. Your word is intrigue. Can I please have all the definition? I mean, all of the information. Sure. Uh, the word can be pronounced intrigue or intrigue. It, it is a verb. It comes from French from Latin. I mean, it comes to, it's French from Italian from Latin. It means to arouse the interest, desire, or curiosity of. Samantha began to, it, Samantha began to be intrigued by her son's slow, deliberate way of talking. Intrigue. I N T R I G U E. Intrigue. That is correct. Hey, awesome. That was the end of our round two here. Um, so we had three spellers misspell, which means we have. 10 spellers remaining. So congratulations to you all. Um, how, do, how do you all feel? Do you want a short break or are we good to go to the next round straight? Okay, let's, let's go through this round and then we'll take a break after that. Let's do that.
Great, then with that being said, let's start with Speller 14. I'm ready. Hi, your word is Arbustle. Arbustle, can I please have all the information for this word? Um, sure. The word is Arbustle. That is the only pronunciation. It is a noun. It comes from Latin. It means a dwarf tree or tree-like shrub. Jessica planted a few arbustle trees as she has very little space in her backyard. Arbustle. A R B U S T L E. Arbustle. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is A R B U S C L E. Good job. Thanks for coming. Speller number 18. Yeah. Hi, your word is myriad. Um, would you please um, repeat the word? Myriad. Myriad? Myriad. Myriad? Yes, that sounds about right. Um, can you please give me all the information? Sure. The word is myriad. It is a noun. It comes from Greek, and it means an indefinitely large number. Tom and his friends marveled looking at the sky with myriad with a myriad of stars on a clear summer's night. Myriad. M I R I A D. Myriad. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is M Y R I A D. Thank you. Bye. Speller 26. Yes, I'm ready. <clears throat> Your word is orifice. Uh, can I have the language of origin? Um, it comes from Middle French. Uh, orifice. Um, can I have all the information? Sure. The word can either be pronounced orifice or orifice. It is a noun. It comes from Middle French. It means the mouth or opening of something, an aperture, hole, or vent. The garden sprinkler head had an orifice of one quarter inch. Uh. Uh, can you be the definition? It means the mouth or opening of something, an aperture, hole, or vent. Uh, orifice, am I saying it correctly? Sounds about right. Are there any alternate pronunciations? Yes, it can either be orifice or orifice. Orifice. Um, can you repeat the def? Can you repeat all the information? Sure. The word can either be pronounced orifice or orifice. It is a noun. It comes from Middle French. It means the mouth or opening of something, an aperture, hole, or vent. The garden sprinkler head had an orifice of one quarter inch. Orifice. A U R I F I C E orifice. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is O R I F I C E. Good job. Speller 29. Yeah, I'm ready. Your word is acolyte. Acolyte? Yes. 
Acolyte. Could I have the definition of this word, please? It means an assistant or follower. Acolyte. Could I? Could you pronounce this word again, please? Acolyte. Does it come from the Greek um, stem "ait," which means uh, what one of does? Could you say that again? Uh, you know what? No. no. Acolyte, right? Um, it sounds about right. Uh, does it come from the Middle English? Sorry, Greek, Greek stem I, which means a resident of. Uh, you're on mute. I don't see that here. <clears throat> I don't see the root here. Acolyte. A C C O L I T E. Acolyte. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is A C O L Y T E. Do you mind if, if you do my spell in this round from here on, just stay in the Zoom call. You can turn off your camera, but just stay here just in case we need you to come back after this round. Okay. Speller number 31. Yes. Hi. Um, this word has a homonym. Moose. Could you say the word? Um, moose. Yeah. Huh? Moose. Can I have all the information, please? Sure. Um, moose is the only pronunciation. It is a noun. It is French from Latin. It means a dessert made with sweetened and flavored whipped cream and gelatin. Martha prepared very tasty chocolate moose dessert for her son's birthday party. Can you please repeat the word? Moose. Can you please repeat the definition? It is a dessert made with sweetened and flavored whipped cream and gelatin. Moose. M O U S E E. Moose. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is M O U S S E. Thank you. Speller number 65. Your word is Corsair. Can I have the definition? It means a pirate or privateer, especially along the Barbary coast. Have all the information. The word is Corsair. That is the only pronunciation. It is a noun. It is Middle French from Old Provençal, from Italian, from Latin. It means a pirate or privateer, especially along the Barbary coast. The famous Corsair ran a secret operation on ships along the coast of North Africa. Corsair? Yeah. Cor Corsair. Okay, C O R S A I R, Corsair. That is correct. Speller number 76. Yes. Your word is Pakistan. Um, Pakistan, can I have the definition? It is a country in South Asia next to India and Afghanistan. Pakistan, P A K I S T A A Pakistan. That is correct. Spell number 
Speller number 90. Uh, can we see your hands, please? I'm ready. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no problem. Um, your word is calliope. Calliope? Yes. Calliope. What, what is the language of origin? It is Latin from Greek. Does this come from the Latin co meaning next to? No, I don't see that here. Can you please repeat the word? Calliope. Can you please give me all the information? Sure. The word is calliope. It can either be pronounced calliope or calliope. It is a noun, it is Latin from Greek. It means a musical instrument consisting of a series of crude steam or air whistles used on riverboats and in circuses and carnivals. The calliope could be heard far down the aisle while the passengers wait to board the cruise. Does this come from the Greek, Kali uh, meaning beautiful? Hold on, let me see. Um, I believe you're on the right track. Um, yes, actually, yes. Okay, Calliope. I'll get one C. second. But one second, uh, can I correct you? It's Calliope. Okay, Calliope. You're also at 30 Wait, seconds. Or, yeah, if you want to repeat the word one more time, but you're at 30 seconds, so you can speak. Calliope. C. A L I O P Y Calliope. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The correct spelling is C A L L I O P E. <coughs> Thank you. Speller number ninety six. Yes. Your word is xanthic. Xanthic. Am I pronouncing that right? All right, sounds about right. May I please have all the information? It can either be pronounced xanthic or xanthic. It is an adjective. It is French plus English. It means of relating to or tending toward a yellow color. The daffodil is a xanthic flower. Xanthic. X A N T H I C Xanthic. That is correct. Thank you. Okay, next is speller ninety nine. Your word is telonia. Could you please repeat it again? Telonia. Uh, can I please have the definition? It is a genus of large marine turtles comprising the green turtles. Kelonia. C-H-E-L-O-N-I-A. Kelonia. That is correct. Thank you. Okay, great. Awesome. So with this last round, round three, we had 10 spellers start. We have four spellers remaining. So all the spellers who spelled it correctly in this round will be going to the finals. Um, congratulations, you all. And for everyone who misspelled in this round, um, you all did great. These were very hard words and you all gave really great guesses. So you all should feel really proud too. So for the spellers who are going to go to the finals, that is speller 65, Samhita, speller 76, uh, Silen. Let me know if I'm saying that wrong, though. What is the right way to say that? Silen. Uh, Selene. 
Oh, Celine. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so Speller 65, some hit that. Speller 76, Celine. Speller 96, Arnavi. And then Speller 99, Nikhil. Um, all of you will be going to our grand finals tomorrow, which is at 1.30 p.m. Pacific time and 3.30 p.m. Central time and 4.30 p.m. Eastern time, so depending on your time zone. So we will send over more information by email for you all later today about the finals tomorrow. And we will see you then tomorrow. For the rest of you all, feel free. You're, you can watch the finals on the Spell Pundit Facebook page and cheer on everyone. But thank you all for participating today. You all did fantastic. Thank, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.